Rest in peace, Chris Ledoux, man, one of the more underrated country singers. Well, somebody that we all know in the college football world when it comes to uh, color commentary, when it comes to being a terrific analyst, is Kirk Herbstreit. Of course, he's been with the Worldwide Leader for a long time. Last year, you might remember for his college football uh, playoff selections, the four teams he thought that would get there, one of them he thought would be Oklahoma. It surprised a lot of people, including people from Oklahoma. <laughs> but... You know what? The Sooners made Kirk look like a genius and wound up going uh, to one of those two semifinal games. This year, Kirk, his four picks, Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State, and he's picked, again, a team from the Big 12, but not the Sooners. He's picked that team right there. That's right, Texas Christian, school with the frog. And, uh, you know, for the most part, they've uh, leapfrogged the competition, only losing three times in the past two seasons. And keep in mind, they went 11-2 and last year, despite having injuries on both sides of the ball. And one of their two losses last year came to my Sooners and only lost in Norman by one point. So it tells you that TCU still had a very productive season in spite of the injury. But I don't think any team in college football was more injury riddled than those guys from Fort Worth. I do think, at least for the first part of the season, that Gary Patterson's squad is going to be carried by the defense. And I'll explain why later. But this defense, you know, I thought they were, you know, kind of middle of the pack. I didn't think they were good against the run, against the pass a little bit better. And they ended up about average as far as total yardage per game, giving up just under 400. Defensive line, though, will welcome back James McFarland, who didn't see action in 2015 as far as starts. But, uh, you know, 2014 was productive, and now he comes back, and you'll have Josh Carraway on the other side with his nine sacks from a year ago. And somebody that really should help out will be a JUCO transfer uh, by the name of Matt Bozen, and he should really, uh, really fit in with that rotation quite well. Defensive tackles, uh, you'll have um, Aaron Curry, um, a senior, but this is not going to be a deep area as far as the Horn Frogs go defensively in terms of tackles. So really watch that. But linebackers, they return everybody, including uh, Ty Summers, 64 stops a year ago, and Trayvon Howard is back too, and uh, the name of uh, Montreal Wilson. Um, should be called quite a bit this year in terms of being productive. He had 45 stops a year ago. Now, Chad Glasgow, defensive coordinator now for Texas Christian. Not the first time, of course, he's been a part of that TCU staff. He was a safeties coach um, you know, a few years ago when that team went 13-0 and and had one hell of a defense. I think they finished that year number two in the country. I think it was the year 2010, uh, back when they were in the Mountain West Conference. And Glasgow was a uh, defensive coordinator for a brief period of time at Texas Tech. So he definitely, he definitely you know, knows the Big 12 and you know, just recently uh, was a part of Gary Patterson's staff coming back to Fort Worth at TCU. Now he's a defensive coordinator and he will be the safeties coach as well. And I think that's essential because remember, there's no more Derek Kendrick and he was a valuable safety for that team. But uh, returning is going to be uh, Denzel uh, Johnson, Denzel Johnson. The strong safety had 66 stops a year ago, and at the weak safety position, Nick Orr, um, Nick Orr with over 40 tackles. So lots of experience in terms of the safeties in the corner. Um, you're going to have no question a valuable guy right there. You can see in uh, mostly uh, the corner who should really help out this TCU uh, secondary. So a lot of players coming back for this TCU defense. And again, they have a shot at being number one in the Big 12, one of the best defenses around. I look for them to elevate their game, especially if they can stay healthy. First of all, boy, big, big news for TCU to keep Sonny Cumbie and Doug Meacham as their co-offensive coordinators because they had the opportunity to go elsewhere, but they remain put at Fort Worth. Of course, big challenges await the Horned Frogs because you no longer have, of course, Trevon Boykin at QB, Aaron Green at running back, and Josh Doxson. Wide out. Your three biggest threats have all now moved on. Kenny Hill is getting a second chance to go at quarterback to show what he can do. And you remember two years ago when he started the AM, that game out South Carolina over 500 yards through the air, four TDs. He definitely was an attention getter that night at Columbia, South Carolina. And of course, played well the following game with four more TD passes. But then the next three games, all SEC games, Ole Miss, Mississippi State, and Alabama, he went downhill, and Kenny Hill got replaced and eventually left A&M to come to Texas Christian, had to sit out last year because of the transfer rule. Now, looking at Kenny Hill, looks like he will be the number one guy beating out Foster Sawyer, who played a little bit last year when Boykin got hurt late in the season. And if you have to rely on Sawyer, unless he's improved, it's not going to be a good sign because last year, you might remember, against Kansas, 
He only completed one pass against Kansas. That right there tells you all you need to know. Running game, Kyle Hicks becomes the main guy. Didn't get as many carries last year because of Aaron Green's presence. So now you have Kyle Hicks who will uh, get the majority of the snaps. Receiving-wise, even though doxson has gone, I don't think this is an area that will be too depleted for the Horned Frogs. Uh, returning uh, Deontay Gray. Gray was a productive receiver with 36 catches a year ago. Um, Jalen Austin also is back along with uh, Kevontae Turpin, who had eight touchdown catches a year ago. And the newcomer, that is Taj Williams, the number one Juco receiver out of Iowa, should help out the offense. Now, offensive line, got some starters to replace. Of course, Joseph Noteboom, the only full-time starter back from a year ago at that left tackle position, that critical spot. Of course, you got to replace three all Big 12 players, and that will include the likes of the uh, center in the form of Joey Hunt. Breaking down the Horn Frog schedule, if TCU can get past the Razorbacks that second game, all roads should lead to 4-0, entering the early October matchup against my Sooners and what could very well be the Big 12 championship right there. Now, the following week, they play at Kansas, those are the Horn Frogs, okay? And normally, I would never highlight a top 20 team playing the Jayhawks. But for some reason, the Jayhawks have played the Horn Frogs tough each of the past two seasons. And you look at the schedule down the road, West Virginia could be a little bit tricky. The Mountaineers, of course, that game in Morgantown, so TCU has to watch their step. But it will help to have both Oklahoma State and Texas Tech both coming to Amon G. Carter Stadium. Unlike Kirk Herbstreit, I'm not going to be picking TCU to go to the college football playoff. However, I think this could be the best defense in the Big 12. And if Kenny Hill can look like that Kenny Hill we saw in the beginning of his career at A&M, we could see a TCU team that could very well contend for the Big 12 championship. I think 10 wins is realistic for Gary Patterson's team.